Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the AFR EMS case studies. My name is Chris Ortiz. I'm the EMS division chief for Albuquerque Fire Rescue, along with our medical director, Dr. Kimberly Pruitt, and paramedic driver, Ben Gallardo. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Talk about a case that's important to us, an anaphylaxis case that you had. Uh, we got dispatched at two Delta at Albertsons. It was initially Rescue 9 and Ladder 9. Um, Engine 9 ended up attaching themselves. So we had plenty of manpower. Um, I got followed in with the store director going upstairs, and he says that one of his employees drank something, acting a little funny, walked upstairs, fell at the top of the stairs, went to the restroom to vomit, and collapsed in there. Okay. Um, a lot going on there. So you're going out to a two Delta is a big grocery store. So what are you thinking about on the way before you even got that information from the uh, manager himself? On the way there, I was kind of confused. I was like, maybe it's somebody that ate something in the store. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's a big store. I don't really know what we're going to walk into if it's going to be. Um, I think initially we did get the age with it. So I knew it was an adult. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell. Maybe they're eating something in the parking lot. It was hard to tell what we were walking into. I was just trying to be more prepared of, as far as what our guidelines state um, we're going to do for this kind of call and just try to run through those things as we're driving to the call. Absolutely. Um, just to stay prepared. Perfect. So the manager talks to you, says, I uh, have one of my employees. He collapsed up top in the stairs. He drank something, and that's all I know. So you're able to make your way to that individual. And what did you see? Yeah, um, we walk into the bathroom upstairs as the employee break room. Um, it was kind of confusing at first. I see a bunch of feet under the stall. I hop on the toilet in the other stall, kind of peep over because the door was closed. I couldn't really get it open. So I peep over and I hear some wheezing and I see a gentleman sitting on someone's lap, having a really hard time breathing, has that kind of look on his face of impending doom. So then and there I was like, all right, this is kind of one of those situations where we kind of need to speed up a little bit and we need to do something about it. Um, I was even thinking medications. I was like, we just need to get this guy out of here first of all, and then we can kind of reorganize and go about our treatments. Um, so I asked the pipe man, I was like, you guys need to get him out. Like, however you do it, it doesn't really matter. Just get this guy out. We need to start treating him as soon as possible. First thing the kid you in is you heard that audible strider, right? So you knew yeah. that this was a legitimate reaction. And as far as swelling, did you see anything on the face? Um, on his face, his lips were pretty swollen. Um, you can see in his hands a little bit, his hands were pretty swollen also. Um, but that was initially what I saw and I heard. And it just had that look on his face of really sick. You can tell a sick versus not sick person. And this was obviously a very sick person. Absolutely. Talk about his breathing. What did you see? Um, his breathing, it was a little rapid, um, definitely audible wheezing when we walked into the restroom. So I definitely knew at some point we're going to need to get lung sounds. Um, we're going to need to get some epi on board and get some albuterol going for this gentleman. Um, and I was in your mind, when you go to anaphylaxis call, you always think of worst case scenario. Um, if we don't act fast, this potentially could get to the point where we have to get really aggressive with the airway, um, either go the intubation route or might even have to crack this guy if it gets that bad. Absolutely. Um, his airway is completely swollen shut. Absolutely. Tell us about the history you're able to get from him. Was there any, just given his condition? It was kind of hard to get a history on him. So he was initially not A and O, but he was still able to kind of follow commands a little bit. He was able to walk outside the restroom with the help of the pipe man. Um, he was able to answer simple questions as far as you know, did you eat something? He would nod his head. There really wasn't, the sentences were really broken up. It was, wasn't really clear. I didn't know if he took any medication, stuff like that on scene. Um, yeah, I think he was just working extremely hard to breathe. I think his airway was kind of shutting up a little bit before we gave him uh, the Duoneb and the Epi. Um, so yeah, it was kind of hard to get a, a good history. Sure. Um, coworkers are kind of saying that he ate something that he might've reacted to. Um, and that's kind of all the history we had at that point in time. We didn't really have much to work off of. That oh, makes sense. That's tough. Now you're starting your physical uh, assessment of the patient to include vital signs. What did you guys see? What did you capture? Um, initially, you know, I told guys right away, let's get lung sounds. I was extremely worried about that because when you hear audible wheezing like that and some strider mixed with it, um, you know that, you know, your oxygen saturation is probably not going to be great. Um, and his oxygen saturation wasn't completely horrible, but you still got to treat it. You still got to treat your patient. Sometimes you can't just go off numbers. And I think that's a good lesson for a lot of people out there too, including myself. Like you got to treat your patient. This patient does not look healthy at all. He looks very sick. Something's obviously going on. So we need to, you know, treat that first. Start with your airway, go down your, your breathing, your ABCs, uh, circulation. We try to get a blood pressure on scene. That was pretty hard to get at first too. Um, so I don't think we got a blood pressure until we're in the back of 5.5 because our patient did go kind of unconscious on us in Albertsons. Okay. Um, we got him out of the restroom, sat him on a chair, started to get vitals. Threw, I threw him on the monitor. I just want to see a four lead real quick just to see what we're working with because I think he was slightly tachycardic. 
And I just want to make sure, you know, there wasn't other, any other underlying rhythm that we're missing also. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, young, healthy patients, just acute respiratory distress, a little hypertense, I'm sorry, a little um, tachycardic, slightly hypotensive. Obviously, we're hearing the audible wheezing. Uh, we hear the strider. We're listening to the lung sounds. We hear the same thing see the airway swelling uh, and that altered mental status that you talked about. So you're painting the picture of a really sick patient that you um, encountered just after he drank that protein shake, no other history that would have led you to anything else. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much all the history we had, um, the signs and symptoms we were seeing, the vitals and kind of the short brief history of him drinking something is all we got. Perfect. So now you know what you're dealing with. You have a suspicion of what you're dealing with. One of the true life-saving emergencies that we can actually intervene on. So what are your next steps? Yeah, definitely. The first thing that popped in my mind is we need to give this guy a shot of epi and his deltoid and his muscle really fast. So my lieutenant right away drew it up, gave it to me and gave him that. He drew up Benadryl also right behind that. Um, I think we initially just gave him 25 of Benadryl. Um, I was more precedent. I wanted the epi on board. I was like the first thing I wanted on board. And uh, we also started, we had him on a non-rebreather, switched him to Duoneb as soon as we could to um, get him that albuterol to kind of open up those, those bronchioles and, you know, hopefully he can move some good air. So yeah. Speaking to our young EMTs and newer paramedics in the department, just talk us through exactly which epi you chose and how you administer that. Yeah, so epi one to one, um, draw it up with the one cc syringe, stop at point three, right in the deltoid. Super easy, super quick, life saving medication. But um, I think it's something everyone should be super confident with. When you do need it, you need to like use it really, really fast. You know, because we don't carry epi pens. Sometimes people don't carry epi pens on them. It could be the first time they're having an allergic reaction, and we carry a medication that can save their lives. So perfect. Absolutely. This is my favorite emergency because we can totally fix this. Yeah. And uh, I love that you were aggressive with the epi because the Benadryl, the Dex, the fluids, the albuterol, those are nice adjuncts. But the thing that's going to save this person's life is that epi. Oh, yeah. And I'm that's glad to hear that was your priority and you got that on yeah, of course, right yeah. away. And if you need to give more, you can, right? Yeah, I think I think we ended up giving a second dose en route yeah. to, to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. We waited about 10 or 15 minutes, but we ended up, yeah, we, I was like, we're giving this guy a second dose. Yeah. Was it. his airway still swollen or what was going His on? tongue was swollen. So eventually he started waking up after that first dose of epi. Epi, Benadryl. I think I think my IV might have woke him up in the back of five five. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I told him I was like, "Can you stick out your tongue for me?" He was kind of coming to a little bit. Told us it was a keto protein shake. Was a little more thorough, a little more alert. And I stuck out his tongue, and it was pretty swollen. I was like, "That doesn't look good at all." So yeah, yeah I ended up giving him some uh, some decks in the back too, and stuff like that. Some fluids. So. Good. Anytime there's airway involved with swelling or with, you should never hear anybody breathe, right? And so yeah. if you're hearing him breathe from across the room, you know you're going to have to stop and fix those ABCs before you can yeah, most definitely. move on to other things. And it sounds like you did that. Yeah. yeah Aggressive with that airway. Yeah, it was more of a time management. Like we got to do things kind of quick here. And this was a good call for me as a, as a young paramedic and trying to go down that lieutenant route to learn. So yeah, the crew, the crew did an amazing job. They did all the work. <laughs> And you gave that medicine right in the bathroom, right? You didn't like wait to move him to the rig before you treated him. And no, yeah, we treated him in Albertsons. Um, five five, I think, was getting set up, bringing us a mega mover again, the gurney set up, and all that stuff. So okay. in that time frame, was while they were doing all that, I was kind of screaming at them to set stuff up. We're gonna get this guy. He can't walk. He just went unconscious on us. Um, so we we're just giving him medications, treating him, getting him kind of as stable as we possibly could inside Albertsons up top before Good. we transported. I'm on. glad you took the time to stabilize because this is this emergency can change so fast and is uh, pretty aggressive. So I'm glad you were aggressive with your treatment too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You see a patient, you, our quickest instinct is sick or not sick. You identify that they were sick and a lot of times it kind of ups the game a little bit. We want to run out of there with a patient and get them to definitive care. But ultimately, the care that you provide is definitive. So slowing down, taking a break, knowing what the tools you have in your toolbox and administering those is a fantastic job. Oh, for sure. Yes, sir. I always, um, when I'm teaching, especially like medical students or learners, sometimes paramedics, do you have a, a line in your head that helps you define when to give epi or when to maybe this is just a Benadryl kind of reaction? I think for me personally, I haven't been on a lot of anaphylaxis calls, like true anaphylaxis shock, where you're getting super aggressive with this patient. A lot of them have been minor, but I've been on a couple. And I think the things that come to my mind is you start to see a lot of swelling. You know, you know that they're having some cardiac issues along with respiratory issues. You're seeing those two systems start to kind of collide and try and keep this person afloat. Mm -hmm. And that kind of alarms you in your brain, like, all right, this person needs epi. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're hypotensive. They're not breathing well. You know, their airway's swelling. There's all these things going on, right? It's like, 
you know, sometimes you see cartoons or that picture we had of Will Smith yeah. where everything starts swelling and you're kind of like, all right, this person needs aggressive treatment. Mm -hmm. And I think Epi, you know, is the first thing that comes to my mind right away. Yeah. And Doc has it under teaching points too, as far as skin findings. A lot of us are looking for that urticaria. They're looking for some sort of hives, like something obvious, and it's not always going to be there no. in every patient. So it's good to know. Yeah, there's two systems. I always try to convince myself if there's two systems involved, whether it's airway, can be skin. A lot of times in kids, we see GI. We forget like if they're vomiting or they have diarrhea that counts and so um very aggressive with the airway anytime there's swelling or airway involvement i'm extra i lean more towards the epi early yeah. but if i'm ever on the fence if i can convince myself that there's two systems then i'll go ahead and give it because it's it's such relatively such a small dose and such a potentially severe emergency it's a good decision to be aggressive yeah, no, with I, I agree 100 percent. yeah yeah but yeah, it was weird. I lifted up a shirt too. I was looking for hives or carrier, and none of that stuff was there. It was the hand swelling that kind of stood out to me too. I was like, all right, something's up. Like, yeah, you know, hypotensive swelling in the hands, airway issues. I was like, a lot's going on here. It's two know? systems. Yeah, I was yeah. like, there's a lot going on. So, yeah, well, good. Let's be aggressive with this patient. Excellent job. Excellent Thank you. job. So, um, this is my favorite emergency. If I didn't mention it earlier, <laughs> but we can own this, right? You have the potential yeah. to totally fix him by the time he gets to the hospital. And, sure. and the most most people have the bad outcomes early on, and we're mm -hmm. the ones that are there in the first ten or yeah. fifteen minutes and have a, a chance to make a difference. So five treatments for anaphylaxis, just keeping with the f uh, theme of five epinephrine. And if you if the first one works a little bit, but you need more, you can always give more, right? Yes, Just like you guys did. Uh, dexamethasone, the steroid, it's not going to kick in right away, but it's going to slow down that response. Benadryl, some saline if they're hypotensive, maybe fill that tank. And then uh, albuterol if they're wheezing, just like you guys did. You nailed it. Yeah, it's, everything happened so quick, but you know. <laughs> The crew, the crew did a great job, you know, ladder nine engine nine, those guys were there and they were aggressive. So good. You know, like, good. Ben, what do you think about this? I'm gonna do this. And I didn't have to tell them half the stuff. They were just like on it, you know, it's fantastic. It's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. We good teams out there. Yeah. So that's great. news. anything, uh, last nuggets you want to share with everybody watching to kind of what you took away from this call? I mean, I think the biggest thing is being aggressive with it. You know, you see a very sick patient and I know most of our crews out there are super aggressive. They're really good at what they do. I think we do a great job of, you know, teaching people what to do in these situations. And I think people were really aggressive and I would just stay aggressive with it. If you think you need to push Epi, don't hesitate. Don't be scared because it's Epi for whatever reason, just do it. You know, if you can justify why you're pushing it, like the two systems, like we spoke about, um, you know, that's, I think that's the best thing you can do for patient care, um, is be aggressive. Cause once that airway swells, like you have a whole another issue. And I think staying on top of things is, is probably the best, best route to go on anaphylaxis call. Yeah, for sure. All right, thanks, Ben. Thanks for sharing your case with us. If there's anybody else out who's interested in sharing a case study with the EMS division, please go to our SharePoint page, go to the EMS tab and click on case study submissions. We'd be happy to discuss it with you and get you a chance to come out and talk about it. Until then, we'll see you next week. Thanks.